Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building out what is essentially a Flutter photo gallery application. And we'll be doing this to look at the page view, the material widget, fractional offsets, gradients, and a few other concepts. Inside of this application, I have an assets folder, and inside of that folder, I have three JPEG images. They're basically just big wallpaper images. So one of them's like this light bulb. We've got this like wall looking thing. And then there's like this skylight or whatever it is. To bring in these images, we just go to our pub spec YAML, and then we put in the assets field and we point it towards the three different images. Let's go into our code and build out the skeleton for this application. We'll have a material app with a title called gallery demo. Then we'll have our theme data and we'll just give it colors like green for the primary swatch. And then we'll point towards a class called display page as our home. The class display page will be a stateless widget. And because it's a stateless widget, we want to override our build function. And we also want to create a list of strings that points towards each of our images. We'll be using this list to access all of our images and feed them into our page viewer. Our display page will start with a scaffold and inside of it we'll have a center so that we can center everything from the get-go. Inside of our center, we want to have a sized box and we'll use a method called from size. This allows us to specify a constraint that we want our sized box to follow. In this case, we want our sized box to be sized from the height. So this will pull in 550 pixels, and then the width can be an infinite size. We also have sized box from width, and there's also a sized box from radius if you want to build out a circle. The child inside of this sized box will be our page view builder. The page view is a bit like our list view or our grid view. It's a scrollable list. However, the difference between something like a page view and a list view is the page view forces it so that each of our children is the same size as our viewport. For instance, when we're looking at one of our images, it should be the only image that we see in our viewport on our phone. Of course, there are different ways that we can manipulate this so that it will be bigger or smaller. The page view class also has access to what's called a page controller. And the page controller is what controls which page is visible at a given moment. The page controller also lets us control the offset of our pages, which we can increment with our viewport size. And we can use our page controller to get our scroll speed and position and various things like that. Inside of our page view builder, we'll specify our controller by instantiating a new page controller and we'll set up the viewport fraction property and we'll set this equal to 1.0. This way we'll have it so that one of our pictures will be one to one with our viewport. As we're scrolling through our images, each one will fill the viewport. And I'll show you how we can fool around with this later. We also want to put in our item count. This will be based off of our image list. So we'll just call images length to get the item count. And then our item builder, like our list view and like our grid view, is a function that takes in our build context and then the index. Inside of our item builder, we're going to return a padding. And notice I have to put in the new keyword, but that's simply a bug that still exists in the preview Dart version. This should be removed at some point. For our padding object, we want to give it edge insets symmetric, and this will make the padding symmetric based on our vertical axis and our horizontal axis. So our vertical margin will be 16 pixels and our horizontal margin will be eight pixels. Inside of this padding, we want to create a material widget. Now a material widget is a bit like our container widget. However, the material widget follows the material design specifications. We're just creating a piece of material with this class. This material is a bit like the container, but it has a few more properties to follow along with the material design specification. Inside of this material, we'll set up the property elevation and then the border radius, which will have be circular by eight pixels. This will make it so that each of our images have circular corners. 
and then inside of the material box we'll have a stack. We've used a stack before. Typically you want to use positioned widgets inside of a stack. And of course these position widgets can be aligned based on two sides of our stack. In this case, however, we're not going to be using a positioned widget. So we need to set up what's called the fit property. The fit property is what determines how a non-positioned widget will fit inside of your stack widget. In this case, we want our widgets to expand across the entire stack. So we're using stackfit.expand. Inside of our children list, we'll put our image.asset and we'll put our image in by calling images and passing in the index. And then we also want this to fit in our stack and have it basically cover the entire area of the stack. So we'll call boxfit.cover. Now that we've come this far, let's compile our application and take a look at what it looks like inside of our emulator. So here's our application. We have one of our images and we can slide it horizontally. And when we slide far enough, if we just let go, it will automatically slide so that the next image will be completely in the viewport. If I pull it back and I do not go more than halfway across, it will automatically go back to the original item. And if I go further than halfway, it will automatically go forward. So we've got this kind of elastic behavior built into our page view, which is kind of neat. And you can see that each of the items is in the viewport at one given time. Let's decrease our viewport fraction property. If we decrease it to 0.8, the image gets a little bit smaller and we can see the other image inside of the viewport. If we increment forward, we can see all three images inside of the viewport at the same time. However, we're still focused on the middle image. And this is kind of the advantage of using the page view. All right, so now that we can see our images, let's add a gradient that will sit over top of our images and make them look slightly different. To do this, we want to add a decorated box below our image.asset. A decorated box is a bit like a padding widget in that it's like a container that's based on a specific property. So whereas a padding widget is based on the padding of the widget itself, the decorated box is based on the decoration of the box. So naturally we want to give this decorated box some decoration. So we need to give it some box decoration. And one of the properties of the box decoration object is the gradient. With Flutter, we can create a linear gradient and a radial gradient. I'm going to create a linear gradient. The radial gradient is the gradient that will be circular, whereas a linear gradient is a gradient that will move from one portion of the screen to the other. And with our linear gradient, we need to specify the beginning and the end. For this gradient, I'm going to make use of fractional offset bottom right for our beginning. So this will start in our bottom right corner and then fractional offset top left will start up in our left corner. And then we'll have our gradient move towards our top left corner. Now notice that we're getting an error here and that's because we do not have the colors field filled out in our gradient yet. If I just put an empty list inside of the colors property, it will then remove the error and that's because colors is looking for a list. The colors that we put in our gradient are in hexadecimal notation. 0x0000000 is black and 0xffffffff is white. And you can see that there's sort of a white tint coming over the top left corner. And then there's sort of a dark tint coming over the bottom right corner. We can use a color picker to sort of change the color. And I'm using a sort of bluish color here. And then I'm using a sort of pinkish color here. We can actually see the gradients a bit better if I set the opacity to 1.0. So you can see in the bottom we have this green gradient and then in the top we have this red gradient. For this particular application, I'm actually going to center the gradient. 
So I've changed the fractional offsets from bottom right to bottom center and from top left to top center. And we'll take our opacity and we're going to lower it quite a bit. So here's a nice gradient that we can use. I've got a pure block over the bottom here at 0.9 opacity. And then we've got a much lighter black at the top. It goes from dark all the way up to bright at the top. Alright guys, so that's it for today. If you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, downvote as much as you like. Have a good night.